Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome all the members to the 21st meeting in 2017 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. We have received apologies from John Scott, our convener, and also Alison Harris, and I'd like to welcome Annie Wells, who is attending as a substitute member for John Scott. Um, agenda item number one is the decision on taking business in private. Uh, it is proposed that the committee take item number seven in private. Item seven is a consideration of the delegated powers provisions in the Forestry and Land Management of Scotland Bill. Does the committee agree to take item seven in private? Yes. Agenda item number two uh, is instruments subject to affirmative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the draft advice and assistance proceedings for recovery of documents, Scotland Regulations 2017. Is the committee content with this instrument? Yes. Agenda item number three is instruments subject to negative procedure. The next instrument for consideration is the Education, Fees and Student Support Miscellaneous Amendments, Scotland Regulations 2017, SSI 2017. 180. The purpose of this instrument is to make a number of amendments to seven sets of regulations relating to student fees, allowances, loans and bursaries. Our legal advisers have identified an issue in relation to the drafting of new paragraph 4b1 of regulation 2 of the Education Student Loans for Tuition Fees, Scotland Regulations 2006, inserted by regulation 3b of the regulations, in that it could be clearer. In particular, it could be clearer that the words that person in the final line of subparagraph B1 are identified, sorry, are intended to refer to the person who will be undertaking a course of study rather than to the person's parents, guardians or any other person having parental responsibility or care of them when a child. Multiple references to a person or that person or any person and any other person in subparagraph B1 affect the clarity of the provision. Accordingly, does the committee agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament under reporting ground H for the reason I have just outlined? Yes. In addition, the provision of a more detailed policy note or further supporting documentation explaining and fill the policy intention underlying this provision would have assisted the committee in its scrutiny of this instrument. Given that the instrument makes detailed technical amendments to the eligibility criteria for student support and tuition fee loans, in part in response to a judgment of the UK Supreme Court upholding a challenge to the existing eligibility criteria applicable under the equivalent England and Wales regulations on human rights grounds, does the committee agree to express its disappointment that fuller supporting documentation or an impact assessment was not supplied and express its concern that a consultation was not considered necessary? Furthermore, our legal advisers have identified that the instrument contains the following four drafting errors. The first is the word the is omitted from the beginning of subparagraph B2 in, of new regulation 4.2 uh, of the Education Student Loans for Tuition Fees Scotland Regulations 2006, inserted by regulation 3B. Secondly, in new paragraph 9A of regulation 2, of the Education Student Loans for Tuition Fees Scotland Regulations 2006, inserted by Regulation 3C, and in new paragraph 8A of Regulation 2 of the Education Student Loans Scotland Regulations 2007, inserted by Regulation 16B, the references to paragraph 24B should be references to Regulation 24B. Thirdly, in Regulation 10B, in the references to 5B and 6A3 and B of Schedule 1 of the Nursing and Midwifery Student Allowances Scotland Regulations 2007, the parenthesis around both 5 and 6 should be deleted. And fourthly, the references to Regulation 2, 3 and 4 in Regulation 22 should be to Regulation 2, 2 and 3. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament under the general reporting ground as a result of the drafting errors I have just outlined? Uh, nonetheless, uh, does the committee agree to welcome the Scottish Government's commitment to amend these provisions the next time it makes regulations in the area of student support? 
The next instrument for consideration is the Welfare Reform Consequential Amendments Scotland Regulations 2017 SSI 2017-182. The purpose of the instrument is to introduce a maximum earned income and threshold for entitlement to free school lunches and free early learning for childcare for two-year-old children where a child or child's parents is in receipt of universal credit. Our legal advisors have identified that the regulations have been, made, have been made by what appears to be an unusual or unexpected use of the powers conferred by the parent statute. The regulations are made under powers conferred by sections 1 and 3 of the Welfare Reform for the Provision Scotland Act 2012. Those powers enable consequential amendments to subordinate legislation as a result of the introduction of universal credit by part 1 of the Welfare Reform Act 2012. However, Regulation 2 amends provisions in the Education School Lunches Scotland Regulations 2009, which were made under powers contained in Section 53.3a and b of the Education Scotland Act 1980. Regulation 3 amends provisions in the provision of early learning and childcare specified at Children a Scotland Order 2014, which were made under powers to make an order contained in Section 47. To C of the Children and Young, Young People Scotland Act 2014. It would have been a usual and expected use of powers uh, for the Scottish Government to have selected the powers uh, contained in those 1980 and 2014 Acts uh, to make the provisions of this instrument rather than the powers contained in the 2012 Act. If the Scottish Government had chosen uh, to use the powers in section 47 to C of the 2014 Act, to make the provisions contained in Regulation 3, the Parliament would have been enabled uh, to consider the amendments of the provision of early learning and childcare spe specified children Scotland Order 2014 with the higher scrutiny level which the affirmative procedure allows. The effect of choosing to use the powers in the 2012 Act is to downgrade the scrutiny procedure for the consideration of Regulation 3 of the instrument to the negative procedure. The use of the powers in the 2014 Act would also have involved laying a separate order in draft. As, regu as regards Regulation 2, the use of the powers contained in the 2012 Act, rather than those in the 1980 Act, appears to have had no different effect. Accordingly, does the Committee agree to draw the regulations to the attention of the Parliament on the reporting ground G, uh, G uh, for the reasons I have outlined? Uh, the next instrument for consideration is the Building Miscellaneous Amendments Scotland Regulations 2017 SSI 2017-188. Uh, this instrument amends the Building Scotland Regulations 2004, the Building Procedure Scotland Regulations 2004, the Building Fees Scotland Regulations 2004 and the Building Forums Scotland Regulations 2005. Regulation 2.3 of the instrument inserts a new Regulation 2A into the Building Procedure Scotland Regulations 2004, which sets out the criteria to be met before a document can be sent by electronic communication. One such criterion uh, is that the document must be legible in all material respects. That expression is defined in paragraph 7 of the new Regulation 2A. Our legal advisors have identified that the word sent has been omitted from the definition. Accordingly, does the Committee agree to draw the regulations uh, to the attention of the Parliament on the general reporting ground in respect of this drafting error? And does the Committee also agree uh, to welcome that the Scottish Government has acknowledged this error and has indicated that an amending instrument will be laid during this week to correct it? Uh, no points have been raised by legal advisers on uh, the marketing of fruit plant and propagating material Scotland regulations 2017 SSI 2017-177 is a committee content with this instrument. Yeah. Agenda item number four is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. At no points have been raised by legal advisers on the Community Empowerment Scotland Act 2015 commencement number eight order 2017 SSI 2017-192 and the Lobbying Scotland Act 2016 Commencement No. 1 Regulations uh, 2017, SSI 2017-201. Is the committee content with these instruments? 
Thank you. Agenda item number five is the Air Departure Tax Scotland Bill. Item five is the consideration of the Air Departure Tax Scotland Bill at stage two. The committee recommended that the Scottish Government bring forward amendments at stage two to make detailed provision uh, for exemptions uh, from the definition of a chargeable passenger and chargeable aircraft in its stage one report, as this uh, would afford Parliament the best opportunity for effective scrutiny of this significant aspect of the Bill's policy. The Scottish Government uh, brought forward amendments at stage two, which make detailed provision for chargeable passengers and exemptions at sections 2A and 2E and chargeable aircraft and, exem and exemptions at section 3A and 3B. Accordingly, does the Committee agree uh, to welcome the amendments at stage two, which meet the terms of the Committee's recommendations? Agenda item number six is the Railway Policing Scotland Bill. Item six is a consideration of the Railway Policing Scotland Bill at stage two. In its stage one report, the committee recommended that the power in new section 85C1 should be amended at stage two, so that it's subject uh, to the affirmative procedure. The Scottish Government accepted the recommendation and has brought forward amendments at stage two to give effect to it. Accordingly, does the committee agree to welcome the amendments at stage two, which meet the terms of the committee's recommendations? Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm now uh, going to, uh, end, well, that ends the public uh, part of this meeting. I'm now meeting into private. <laughs>